everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Delaney Fisher. And today we are going to be talking all about the most recent season of Love is Blind. Mm, <laughs> get <Right>. excited. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have not watched the most recent season, which is season three, this will be a heavy spoiler episode. So <laughs> this is yes. your spoiler alert. We're going to be talking about the episode I'm sorry, the the whole season in depth. And this episode is coming out on November 21st. So when this comes out, the show will have wrapped, what, two weeks ago-ish is when the the final episodes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, are are they spoilers or are you just behind? Catch up. (laughs) (laughs) You know? It's so funny. I feel like there's something especially about Love is Blind where, like, if you do not watch right along with everybody it's like the internet is just fair game for spoilers like people cannot keep it to themselves because (laughs) people are so excited to talk about what they thought of it I mean and us included that's why we're doing this episode because like you and I haven't even gotten to talk yet about what we think of it we're just going to be talking about it on this episode together Absolutely. And I can say, you know, with my position, I don't really get spoilers with anything because I'm, I don't have social media anymore and stuff. And so I, Cam is always like, oh man, I saw something and I shouldn't have seen it. Like, I don't, I just don't have that issue, but um, I feel for all of you if uh, if the spoilers are really ruining your life. (laughs) God, you getting off social media is like the gift that keeps on giving you because I hadn't even thought about that aspect of it, but yeah, things don't get spoiled. And I have been frustrated in the past about like things getting spoiled so quickly for like, yeah. even if I'm a few hours behind watching the finale of something, I get a spoiler in my feed. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. Cam like can't watch, do anything if he doesn't know the sports outcome of something like oh, yeah. baseball or something. He's like, I can't look at my phone. I'm gonna, somebody's going to fuck it up for me. I'm like, I don't know. Truly. Meanwhile, oh. I'm, I'm over here like, I think I'll start Game of Thrones. I have no idea what happens on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So have you not watched Game of Thrones yet? I've never, I haven't, I've seen bits and pieces. I, I watched okay. all of the House of the Dragon or whatever it's called with Cam. Okay. I've seen bits and pieces of like, you know, the other stuff, but um, I'm considering watching it from the beginning, but I know it's a huge undertaking, so I don't know. I know. Do you want to watch it with me? Maybe. Because <laughs> I I started to watch it in 2020 and I only made it through, I think like a season and a half. And then I stopped because it's, the, the show is very dark. And 2020 was very dark. And I think it just wasn't like the right, like I needed a little bit of a lighter vibe. A break. (laughs) You needed Love is Blind in your life. I needed a Love is Blind, yeah. Um, And you actually, I credit you for getting me into things like Love is Blind and what was the other one you got? Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight, yes. Temptation Island. What was it? Have you done uh, Temptation Island or Bachelor in Paradise or... I used to do Bachelor in Paradise, but what was the other one? Two was it Too Hot to Handle? Oh, Too Hot to Handle, of course. Too hot to handle. Yes. Yeah, yes, you got me. What about that. Dated and Related? Seen that? Seen that no. gem recently? No. <laughs> God, but it sounds That's right all, up your alley. It's all I watch, you guys. It's so funny. People just don't expect that. Like the only thing I really watch is like dating and reality type shows now. Right. It's so so juicy. I love it. It is a very fun escape and it's yeah. so light. So yeah, you've really, you have sucked <laughs> me into Love is Blind. And there, there is something I think special about the show though, because people yeah. do, there are people who are still married. Yeah. So even though it is, yes, it's a reality TV show. Yes, there are parts of it where you're like, oh, this feels really trashy and like Jersey Shore-ish. Yeah. But then you do see actually, there are some like really tender deep moments of people truly falling in love and yeah. feeling like they're meeting their soulmate and that there's something about it that feels um feels rewarding to watch it 
I agree. It's like really designed for more depth and like value based dating and relationship, you know? And I just think that's a really cool concept to you're forced to get to know somebody's personality and values and kind of like feel their energy even before you see them. I think that's so cool. I would like, if I was single, I would be super interested in an experience like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna, we, we have so much to say about the season, but before we do just a couple quick announcements. So my tour for 2022 is wrapped, but so many tour dates are already up on my website. I will quickly list the cities that we've got so far. Providence, Raleigh, Philadelphia, Portland, Cincinnati, Kearney, Minneapolis, San Francisco, Rosemont, Chicago, Denver, Uncasville, Salt Lake City, Louisville, T- Tacoma. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that every episode leading up to the tour, but I do just, you know, I feel like if you live in one of those cities, even if I say it fast, your ears yeah. will hopefully perk up for a sec. So um, yeah, if, if I'm coming to where you live or somewhere near where you live, please go to KelseyCook.com, grab a tour ticket. Cannot wait to see you guys. Yeah, love it. Um, my favorite city that you always list is Uncasville or whatever, whatever that place is, because I just think that's a fun name. And I feel like, I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there in Uncasville. <laughs> it's, you know, what's funny is there's not a lot going on. In <laughs> it is a casino resort in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Oh, really? It's such a strange, it's all, it's, I think the drunkest gig I do all weekend. Oh, is, well, there you go. A lot going on behind Roadhouse. closed doors. <laughs> yeah, I always get a lot of like drunken crowd work clips. And by the way, when I'm saying my drunkest, it's not I'm completely sober the whole weekend. <laughs> maybe I should be drunk the whole weekend. Maybe that would make it <laughs> easier to get through. But like the people are so drunk because it's a casino. They've been drinking yeah. all day. They come in and it's it's Connecticut there's something about Connecticut people feel a little lawless but yeah I mean I've done it for two years and um the resort itself is beautiful and fun to stay at but yeah the shows are a little a little wild west-ish but yeah just the the name makes me think of like that's where Jimmy Buffett fans fans live or something Uh uh (laughs) like that's just my that's my that's the vibe um well Um, I have a podcast called the minimalist business podcast. It is a private show, but it's completely free. You can get it at delaneyfisher.com and very excited about the fact that, um, my business consultancy has recently niched and we are now supporting licensed mental health professionals, uh, grow their private practice and really expand beyond that, you know, launching podcasts, TV appearances, whatever, whatever you desire. Um, so come on over delaneyfisher.com, all entrepreneurs and business owners are welcome if you're interested in scaling a minimalist business. Um, But that's who we are supporting at this time. And it's been a lot of fun so far. I feel really good about it. Yes. I can feel the excitement when you talk about it. Yes. uh, Just feels, yeah, it feels right. feels like the right move. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Yes. 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 We're so happy for you. Thank you. Um, So let's dive into season three of Love is Blind. Let's do it. Delaney and I. And once again, heavy spoiler alert. Go... (laughs) Go finish the season if you haven't watched it yet, and then come back and dive into uh, to the juice with us. Yes. So we're just going to go couple by couple, discuss what we what we found interesting about them, kind of what the their season arc was and stuff like that. So let's start with Alexa and Brennan. Oh, yes. Who yeah. I feel like were a fan favorite couple. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they um, were one of two couples who did say I do at the altar. There were five couples that they followed this season and um, two of them said I do. Three of them did not get married. And at the reunion episode, they are still married. They seem really happy and they were like the the drama free couple of the season. Yes. And I like how they, they on the reunion said that, yeah, we were like pretty smooth sailing and then we moved in together and that's when shit, (laughs) we're going to figure our shit out. And I have found that to be kind of true in my relationship too, is like the things that we've had to really figure out are really based on like the day-to-day habits and living situation of having a shared space, but not so much in our like relationship outside of the home so much i see you know 
Right. I loved the quote that Alexa said, which um, could certainly be our quotable for today's episode oh, is yeah. don't let roommate problems become marriage problems. Yes. So the thing is like, if you're having a conflict over the dishes or the vacuuming, like try to figure out a way to, you know, make that problem uh, disappear before it does become a really huge thing in your relationship. A thousand percent. That's why in my home, we have systems uh, for everything because we have to, or I will lose my fucking mind. <laughs> well, that's, and I, I think you've touched on it before on the podcast, but that's something I had written down in my notes today was um, how have you and Cam navigated those sort of quote unquote roommate problems? Yeah. So, you know, I, we have very different like personalities in this department. I like things pretty tidy and I like to kind of, you know, stay on top of, you know, watering the plants and this and that, and it's got to get done right now because I like, that's how I like it. And Cam's like, Oh, I'll get to it whenever, maybe today, maybe three weeks from now. It's all good. (laughs) Nothing's urgent, which I love. Like there's a time and place for both of that kind of energy. But when it comes to our, the home tasks, we have outsourced as much as possible to just remove those things from both of our plates. So there's not even a conversation or issue to begin with anymore. It's like we, we outsource a lot of food delivery, laundry service, house cleaning, all that kind of stuff. And that has been immensely helpful. And then what remains, we have just split it up based on what each of us like doing the most, um, what chores around the home. We don't really like, yeah, mind doing and Mm -hmm. also like kind of weighing the energy of that task, you know? So like, him tending to like the backyard and picking up the dog shit, you know, several, no, once a day or something might be equivalent to, you know, me filling the dishwasher or something. So it's just kind of like making sure that we both feel like we're in an equal partnership and nobody is like doing way more than the other. Um, So, you know, and, and we kind of have to like meet and reevaluate sometimes if new things get added to our plate or, if we outsource something that's removed or whatever. What about right. house? Yeah, well, I was going to say, do you, before I get into my stuff, do you have yeah. tips for people who, like, it sounds like one of your main solutions has become to outsource, but yeah. we know that that is not um, necessarily like where everybody is at financially. Yeah. And I just wondered if you had tips for people if outsourcing is not an option thousand percent. Like before I could really afford to outsource regularly. I just simplified a lot of things. So instead of outsourcing like pre-made meals, I would buy a lot of frozen things that I didn't have to cook that I could just heat up and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I would batch my chores a lot. So I'd be like, you know what, this, this Saturday once a month is like my laundry day. So I don't have to think about it at all for the entire month. And then I just dedicate this morning. So batching work and simplifying, um, was really huge. What's the other one I said that we, um, oh, same thing with house cleaning. Like, how can you batch that? Or depending on, depending on what you like doing, some people like doing everything at once, like this full day of house cleaning is the day or do like 10 to 15 minutes per day, you know, before you sit down in the evening and then, you know, you're maintaining like kind of like corner by corner or room by room of your home. But those are the things that I did before I could just kind of take it off of our plates. Yeah. I really love that idea of batching and of almost like scheduling something for both of you together as an event. Yes. Like, Hey, Sunday morning is going to be like our weekly cleaning time. We we like put on music we like, like make it a thing that is less something you dread and more like, okay, we're in this together. Nobody's nagging one another. It's like, we just know that we're going to do the weekly thing right now. Exactly. That's Cam and I did that one when, when we uh when we finally like got curtains and stuff for, mm-hmm. for our place. So like, okay, we got a lot of curtains to hang up. Let's put on some music, we'll make each other a drink, and I will assist Cam as he does most of the work. And that was really <laughs> fun for us. <laughs> you know, but it's like exactly like how can you make it fun? Um, is is such a good one. Yes, I love that, Kels. Yeah, I think you had mentioned this too, of having that communication about like, okay, what is your most dreaded chore? What is your most tolerated chore? Because sometimes it's like, I think 
couples get surprised of like, oh, you actually like doing the dishes? Well, I fucking hate doing the dishes. So great. Like, do you mind having that be your thing? And if I don't mind doing this, I'll do this. Like having that communication in place. I think there is a lot of compromise that has to happen between couples. I think it's pretty rare. Like you can be so compatible with somebody in a million ways, but I do think it's pretty rare when two people like to live the exact same way in terms Mm. of like cleanliness. And I'm the same as you where clutter makes me insane. Yeah. But I know that I'm uh, like, like, I know that it's pretty unusual, I think, for a partner to feel that exact same level of like needing there to be so little clutter around. So I think it's trying to find that compromise within one another of like me not being so uptight about it potentially and my partner being like, okay, I know that that is going to bug her. So I'm going to try to be like mindful of that. Yes. We've had to do a lot of that. Cause I know that I might overcompensate in that area where I right. like things maybe too tidy all the time where I'm not like fully relaxing, you know, and right. then Cam might wait a little bit too long. So we definitely have to check in like, um, you know, Hey, you know, that stuff has been sitting out for a few days. Do you think you could do it like on Thursday instead of like, can right. you do it right now? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I meant to do it. I'll do it. Yeah. You know, like that communication is so key. Right. And we will get to this couple later, but I do feel like this is kind of an interesting time to bring up Zainab and Cole because yeah. that was a big conflict for them was how they lived together in terms of Cole's cleanliness and right. Zainab's communication about it was like she talked in the reunion about like oh I yeah this is hard for me to watch obviously there were better ways for me to communicate this rather than to be like kind of immediately on him and right I I think that's really hard and I feel like I've struggled with that in the past of like it's easy to get into that nagging space it's hard to communicate sometimes about asking somebody to do something without sounding frustrated or bitchy. Um, And I think it's also hard for things to not become codependent in that way where you're like, well, I'll just, I'm just going to do it because it's bothering me that there's this mess. So I'm just going to do it really quick. But that can reinforce to the other person that they actually don't have to, because if they wait long enough, it'll just get done. Yes. You know, and that's not always the case. I'm just saying like, sometimes it, it's hard to maintain your boundaries. I think when you live with somebody. Absolutely. Because if you like things a certain way, it's hard to wait for the other person to kind of do that. And so, yeah, Cam and I literally have had to set a lot of expectations in this area. We actually have a chore list and we have our initials next to each chore. Like there's no question on like whose job is what anymore, because oh, when yeah. we, when we didn't have that, we would go back and talk about it on a daily basis. And and so yeah. I finally asked him, I said, can we just take 30 minutes and delegate? Like, let's really assign everything to each other. So then yeah. we never have to fucking talk about this shit again. This yeah. is like so draining. And he's like, really want to take like 30 minutes. I'm like, we can either take 30 minutes now, or we can talk about this for an hour for the rest of our life every single fucking day what do you prefer (laughs) you know but like we have we have to have those in place and I um and I never wanted to feel like like you said Kels like kind of nagging which I don't I think it's more just like there's communication and expectations and if there's if that's not being met then I just feel like my needs are not being met or his needs are not being met. And we just feel kind of unheard and unseen in the relationship over something that, you know, is solvable. Um, But it is, it is a hard, like, it's a hard balance of like communicating your needs and, and wanting your partner to show up for those and not like overdoing it to the point where they feel like they have to like be perfect around you or something. Right. Or that feeling of they're under a microscope, like right. that you always, John Heffron had this great joke. I don't know if he still does it, but that like his wife would ask him to take out the trash and he'd be like, okay. And it's kind of what you're t- talking about with Cam, but 
he, that John felt like as soon as his wife asked him to take out a tra- take out the trash, a timer would start in <laughs> her head. <laughs> and if it was not done like immediately, then it was like a massive problem and stuff like that. But I think that's so common for a lot of people is like, if you ask for a chore like that, to be like, yes. hey, can you, do you mind doing that? And the person's like, yeah, like after I'm done playing this video game or after I'm done doing that. And you're just like, Ugh. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, you know, this because we've run into this issue too. So, you know, if I would ask Cam, like, hey, do you mind taking the trash out? In my head, I'm thinking a logical time frame would be within the next maybe 15 minutes. And he's thinking maybe in the next two days. And that's just how our brains work. Yes. I think yes. nobody's right or wrong. And so I have just started to get more specific with certain things like, hey, would you mind taking the trash out in the next 30 minutes? Let me know if you can't do that. And then I don't mind doing it. And that's, that's of course, before we had like our chore system mm-hmm. in place. But um, I found specifics can be really helpful because you just don't want to assume the other person can like read your mind of like how you like to do things or how you would do it if it was like you yeah. doing the task, you know? Yes. And I don't think it's nagging. I think it's just like expressing what you truly need, you know, on both ends and mm-hmm. finding that happy medium. Yeah, that is such a good point. Like you can date somebody for a long time and feel like you really know them and and all that stuff. But living together, I do think making those assumptions of like, well, when I think this is like a reasonable amount of time for something to go by, it's so rarely the same amount of time as the other person. Yes. It's like we all come from completely different backgrounds. Yes. You know, a lot of like when you if you move in with a partner and you're both I don't know like over 30 there's a chance that you like one of you or both of you have lived alone for a period of time um leading up to that no no roommates just on your own and when you live by yourself for a while you like you live at your own pace yeah you you do the dishes whenever you want to do the dishes you do your laundry whenever you want to do your laundry nobody is telling you when to do things. So you kind of get into your own rhythm of like, you decide how clean your space is. Yeah. And when you are merging those two people, I think it just does require like a ton of communication. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Like you said, we all were raised differently and like saw different households and how they operate. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing all that shit into our new household with our partner. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And like merging of pets I think oh. that is like this whole other chapter of like, like what you are, how do I want to say this? Like what you easily tolerate versus what you don't easily tolerate. Yeah. And like, I get so used to my cats and I think about for, you know, somebody that doesn't own cats, that's probably like not always the best thing to move in with somebody who has like a litter box. And like, I get used to the fact that like little pieces of litter sometimes get tracked around because it's just like the nature of having right. cats and like wood floors. And I'm sure for some people, it's just like, what the fuck? I hate this. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, I don't, you just get so used to it. You get used to like yeah. pet hair on surfaces. Or I know Delaney, you guys talk about like your dogs barking. Yes. And like, if you had maybe had your two dogs before you met Cam and then he moved in and was like, oh, wow, I just went from a, an apartment that was always quiet yeah. to now there is noise a lot of the time. It's yeah. like, it's just funny. It's like the things you have to navigate in a serious relationship, it goes so far beyond just like the love for the person. Yeah. And you know what, that quote that Alexa mentioned in that episode is so good, but I, I have been very guilty of that where if I feel like I'm not being heard when it comes to the household, it does affect how I feel in my relationship. And that's just the truth, you know? And like, it's, it's so important to me that that is managed because uh, going back to throwback episode to the five love languages, 
I, acts of service? Yes, I'm acts of service. I'm acts of service and quality time. And Cam is physical touch and words of affirmation. We're completely different. And so all he needs is like a, a head rub, you know, and, oh, and he loves gifts. He's like all three of those things. He oh, yeah. needs a little treat and a head rub and told that he's cute. And I need the fucking trash taken out, you know, and to plan a goddamn trip. <laughs> Do you realize that the way you just described what Cam needs is the exact same as what a dog needs? You said he needs a little treat, a pat on the head, and to be told that he's cute. <laughs> like, that is verbatim. You can say I'm a dog just... mom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, but like, it's, it's, yeah, we have to like be really mindful about that, that we show and receive loves like Mm -hmm. in such different ways with each other where for him, it's just the trash. It, for me, it's like whether I feel respected and loved in a relationship and seen. Yeah. Yeah. Cared about. Oh my gosh. I know. (laughs) I, I don't think I thought when we did the love language episode years ago, I don't know that I would have thought at the time how often that theme would come up on this podcast and just in my life in general oh yeah yeah like what a what a concept yeah and you no know what it's, so it's yeah and it's so interesting because like cam will bring me a little like gift or treat or something like if he goes grocery shopping he'll bring me mm-hmm. something sweet and i'm like this is such a nice treat but i'm also like but i would re- prefer if you had helped with this task in the house like and and then I feel ungrateful for like this is so nice but this is how you like getting love from me not necessarily always the other way around you know it's like right but it's it's easy to fall into the the kind of um I don't know fall into giving the love that you like Totally. You know, because he doesn't give a shit if I like clean up his work area. He doesn't even notice it. But I'm like, oh, see, I love my husband so much. <laughs> it's like, he's like, where's my candy? I want a nice little <laughs> gift from the store. <laughs> where's my candy, bitch? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the I, I, I've talked about this a lot, actually, with Taylor um, on the phone is like. Love languages, when you think of that, literally, it is a language. And so yeah. if you're way that you prefer to receive love is gifts right like what what cam likes it's also so understandable that that is the language that he is also fluent in speaking to you so it's like hard i think for people to shift gears and truly learn how to be like bilingual in expressing and receiving love because a lot of the time it's like well we just want to do what makes sense to us And we forget that it doesn't like that. There's actually things that are lost in translation. It's like, um, yes, uh, like a conversion issue. It's like a conversion rate issue. It's like, this doesn't like you giving me a candy bar in your relationship. It's like that conversion rate from dollars to euros or whatever. It's like, (laughs) this is not the same to you as taking the trash out. Like taking the trash out holds a way higher value. Oh my gosh. It almost makes me think of a new system I might want to (laughs) create. Here are some specific things that translate into our like like Cam could write on his like when you bring me home gummy bears from Ralph's, you know, like when yes. I like because that will be helpful for me too. It's like, okay, I want to make sure he feels like really loved today. What's something on like his list that he's liked from me in the past? And I want to do more yeah. of that. And then maybe do that for me because sometimes it's hard to just like pull it out of your ass at the right time. And if you have a little cheat sheet it can be very helpful. I I like to minimize any kind of like decision fatigue or anything like that. And, um, you know, some people like that's a little too type a for relationship. Of course, there's like other things we do organically, but I just find that that's helpful for me because I get really overwhelmed. Yeah, dude. totally. (laughs) And I think it's a good thing to check in. Like, even if you feel like things are solid in your relationship, I don't think it ever hurts to ask the person like, Hey, I just want to make sure that you are feeling loved by me. Like, am I showing up for you in the way that actually feels like love to you? Because we might get into that pattern of like, oh yeah, well, I am telling them I love them every day. I'm sure they feel loved, but maybe that person's love language isn't words of affirmation. Maybe it's like they would love more, you know, whatever it is, physical affection, help around the house, whatever their love language is. Oh, amen. Yes. Yeah. I want to be one of those couples that like 
you know, does a 20 minute check-in once a week. We're not there yet. (laughs) You know, some people have like that weekly meeting for their relationship and they talk about all that, like how, you know, what's, what's something that you're needing that I'm not doing or how's it go, whatever. And, um, I think that's just so great to like continuously, like just, yeah, check in, recalibrate if needed, spend some quality time together. Um, yeah. Well, did I, I thought I shared it on the podcast. Maybe I didn't. The, um, the Samantha Ravendall, uh, list that she talked about with her husband that they do a check-in every Sunday and they ask each other these specific questions. Oh, is it the teach one or something? T-E-A-C-H. I've heard of that one too. Um, it is Mm. not that, but it's just like, it is, um, was there anything left unsaid, um, or that you would like to circle back to positive or negative? Like if you got into an intense conversation and maybe it was like, yeah, need to step away from this. Yeah. Cool off. That's good. Um, was, what was something I did that made you feel loved or appreciated? Nice. What stressed you out this week? How can I help or support you better? What's going well for you right now? And then number six is what was your favorite moment together this week? I love that. See, I would start with the favorite moment and then get into the deeper, harder shit. <laughs> Let's start it off nice and light. Honestly, same, same. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I oh. agree because yeah, I think you're right great. that like that first one can kind of potentially set a tough tone. Yeah, no, that's, those are such great questions. Those are excellent questions. I know, I, I don't know where I, I will try to find this, but somebody was talking about the teach method where you get with your partner once a week and you just go through T-E-A-C-H. They all mean something different, like T, talk, E, something, A, uh-huh. ass play, probably not, but you know what I mean? There, there's a whole <laughs> thing. And, um, you know, and it's, it's just an easy way to remember yeah. like, okay, what are the points we're trying to hit here? You know what I mean? You caught me so off guard. You just, uh, what a perfect rule of threes in comedy. You had lulled me into like, talk, eat. He said, I was like, like, what? (laughs) So good. Oh gosh, we could could have a five hour episode about this one topic. Well, apparently we were going to do Love is Blind and we like can't stop talking about fucking vacuuming. Like this is, I didn't know that we had so much to talk about, but apparently we did. I love that we've been doing this show for five and a half years and we still find things where we're like, Oh, we could just have done a whole episode about this. Yes. So, so good. I love well, it. Maybe we will. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's move on to another couple. Yes. So um, the other couple that got married were Matt and Colleen. Yes. Colleen. What did I say her name? Colleen. Mark? Is it Colleen? Colleen. Colleen. I, I feel like I want to say Ka, but Colleen? Col- I think it's more like Colleen. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've only known Colleen's in my life, not, not Colleen. Colleen. Yeah, yeah. I just said Colleen in a weird, I don't Colleen. know why that came out like that, but the Cullen they, Clan, that's from, isn't that from Twilight, the Cullen? Yes, that's okay. what I know. That is what that sounds like. Yeah. So they had a little bit more of a rocky journey to the altar than Alexa and Brennan did. They did say yes once they got up there, but um, I think the really slippery, potentially icky element of this show is something that was kind of a pitfall for Matt and Colleen, and that is the episode where you get to see all of the other people that were in the pods that you might have potentially proposed to or, you know, done their version of dating with on the show. And then sometimes people don't handle that very well because sometimes they feel more physically attracted to one of the people that they did not end up with. Um, And I don't know if you noticed this, but I always notice that in these seasons on that episode they are loading these people up with alcohol oh for sure it it's a reality always. show let's be real yeah oh my gosh <laughs> yes but that yeah. episode in particular it's like yeah okay look at all of these people let's get you by a pool there's always a pool episode they yep. get people as naked as possible they get yep. people as drunk and as drunk. possible mm-hmm. and they let the cameras roll and let the shit fly yeah this is the incubator for all of the bullshit that they're going to carry through the entire season. They want there to be yes. lots of conflict and fucked up shit. So then, you know, there's all that. I mean, if yes. they, if I would love to see what the, how different the outcomes might be if you don't get to see or meet any of the other people. 
I agree. Like if that, sh- if, if we had two different shows or these people on, and it was, you know, we took the same people, if they never got to meet the other people versus what they did, um, mm-hmm. how that would have affected the outcome of the, uh, the wedding day scenario, because it's like immediate, yeah. it's like immediate what ifs and FOMO and fires comparison. Remorse. Yeah. It's all that stuff. Instead of like staying grounded in your decision and saying, I'm committed to showing up with this person and communicating and solving problems and letting it grow or whatever. Yep. It's like, it's this, you know, it's like what we talk about, um, the, why social media is so hard, the, the comparison trap. It's like, they're, they're unleashing that. And I know you're going to have that in the real world, but it's happened so early on when they establish that connection. It's like, can you just give them a little bit more time? Like what, if, what about after wedding day, they get to meet everybody. <laughs> Oh my gosh. (laughs) Some divorces would pop up. (laughs) But I think you're so right. That's a great point that the, I think the trajectory of people um, on the show as a couple would be so different if they didn't see, because I felt like at least this season, the main problems with certain couples stemmed from that episode, stemmed from the comparing to the people that they didn't end up with. Right. And, and how those things were communicated. So Matt and Colleen, um, their kind of core fight that they had on the show that seemed to get brought up repeatedly was that Colleen and Cole had an interaction. They did not end up together, uh, but they had a lot of, they had some dates and a lot of flirtation. And then Cole kind of instigated a flirtatious conversation with Colleen. That was a lot of like, what ifs, right? Like, Mm -hmm. do you, do you think we would have ended up together if we like, am I your type in the real world? Those sort of conversations. And uh, it seemed like, you know, Colleen, even though she wasn't initiating that got kind of swept up in that moment of flattery and again, alcohol is involved. And so she, she, um, you know, I, it's so like, I compare her to like Raven and, uh, what's his name? Bartice's interaction where Raven, I feel like kind of shut things down very quickly when Bartice right. tried to instigate and Colleen right. was a little bit more yeah. loosey goosey. Yeah. And then I guess at least to Colleen's credit, then she did tell Matt that night, like, hey, there was this conversation um, between me and Cole. And Matt was, of course, like not happy about it. Matt had talked about being cheated on in his previous, was it his previous marriage? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think something that was kind of cool to watch for Matt over the course of the season, because they are still married now, is like, in those situations, Matt would go into fight, flight, or freeze. And his go-to was flight. Like he would always threaten to leave. Yeah. Or sometimes like would actually remove himself and leave. And Colleen kind of put her foot down at a certain point and was like, you can't keep, you can't keep leaving like this. It's like either we're going to move forward, work through it or not. But like this whole, um, leaving everything up in the air all the time is is too hard so what did you think of that whole relationship you know I I identify with a lot of pieces of that actually Cam and I talked about this of like hey if somebody came up to me or you and Mm -hmm. said like hey I, I think you're really attractive or whatever we um we talked about like what what's an appropriate response to that you know like what would you do and i said would you be upset if i said oh thank you i think you're very attractive too i I am married but you know thanks for the compliment or whatever he's like yeah i don't give a shit about that (laughs) you know same thing it's like if if somebody walked up to the camp said you're a really handsome guy he said thanks you're you're a beautiful woman here's my wife (laughs) this is my wife (laughs) right right Right? like i don't we find people attractive all the time but we're not leaving the marriage to like go pursue something. And so I think there's this balance of like letting, letting us observe attractive people or even accept a compliment or something, but setting a boundary of like, just because, you know, you're, you're saying a compliment to somebody or vice versa, it, it, it doesn't go further than that. Um, and cause I'm like, I don't know in that moment if I would say like, um, 
you know, thank you, I'm flattered and I am married. I just, I feel like that's such a robotic thing. I don't know if I would actually respond in that way. I think oh, sure. there's, I think there's a, a compliment I would, if I wasn't uncomfortable, I would probably repay some kind of compliment before I said, um, you know, that's, it's really nice, but you know, I'm just so, you know, I'm married. If you were considering this is right. going somewhere that it's not, um, right. mm-hmm. but I don't know, Cam and I might be like, not in the norm with that type of stuff because we'll be at dinner and be like, wow, that guy's hot or that girl's hot or right. you know what I mean? Right. Just, it doesn't really bug us in that way. What about right. anyone else? Well, and I think that was something that um, Bartice was leaning really hard on was that whole human nature aspect where it's like, I'm not going to apologize for finding other people attractive. And it was like, okay, well, of course, yeah. right? Like, like we are human beings with eyeballs of course right. like you will continue to be able to see people and with your eyes go yeah that is a like an objectively attractive person right but Bartise, which he did regret at the reunion yeah and we'll get into that with the you know in a couple couples down the road but like the way he decided to communicate that to nancy was so hurtful and so like unnecessary yeah so i think it's yeah that's like a big the way you talk about it with cam is just like, Hey, if this happens in the real world where somebody uh, hits on me or pays me a compliment, what feels most respectful to you? Like for, for how I respond. And I think that's just fucking awesome that you guys have that communication. So there's no, um, there's no like wondering how your partner is going to respond to that. Yeah. And cam and I watched this uh, series together. So like we talked about it immediately. I think it is a really great, show to watch as a couple because it does bring up a lot of things and um yeah I think I obviously there's a different it it would be different if somebody that I had a connection with in my past or or an ex or something and that interaction would be very different if somebody's like hey you're looking really nice like you know thanks but get out of here you know that that's (laughs) a different situation than maybe like a stranger at an event or something like that so I do understand like why people were hurt because that connection was so fresh, you know, with this other, this other totally. person. Um, but it's like the connection is fresh with everybody. So it's like, as long as you're not like straying away and be like, I'm dropping this person for this one immediately. I, right. I don't know. I, I didn't really resonate as much with just kind of being upset about the interaction. Um, but like you said, being told directly to your face, like, Hey, I find this other person more attractive mm-hmm. physically that would be really hard. And I, I don't know, you know, how I would handle that situation. Those are, you know, we, what's the concept of like the inside voices that's like inside thoughts, you that's know, like inside. Yeah. Keep oh it to yourself. Gosh. Yeah. Okay? Keep thinking filter. that, but you know, like, and I, and I, yeah, like you said, he was very um, sorry about that and alcohol and stuff was involved, but yeah, that would be a different Right. Well, and another quick point too with alcohol, it was interesting how like the one night that Matt was like, oh my gosh, I like, I can't marry this girl. She just like went straight from our conversation to the club without even telling like uh, this whole thing. And then Colleen was like, we FaceTimed, (laughs) but you were hammered. So you don't don't even remember remember it. And I know that that is like, when we had Whitney Cummings on, she talked about halt, right? Yeah. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired to try to not have big conversations, whether it's with your romantic partner or just in general, try yeah. to not have big, important conversations when any of those four things are in play. And I would add a D to the drunk. beginning or end of <laughs> halt is yeah. if you are drunk or if there's alcohol involved in a way that's like, be- I think beyond maybe a drink or two. And, um, I just think that it, it just creates some chaos that is unnecessary. And yeah. that situation watching that with Matt and Colleen was like, oh my God, what a, what a mess of that night that did not need to be a mess. Yeah. Well, I think a new teacher might be H A L T apostrophe D halted, yeah. but you know, what's funny. I mean, Whitney was sharing, I think about a 12 step program. So yes. it's assumed, right. That like the D's <laughs> not involved anymore. It's just these right. four things. But yeah, if you're not into 12 steps, you might add apostrophe D on that and do, do the halted method. And, um, yeah, I think, um, 
that you can't feel secure with somebody who's always threatening to leave at every little thing. That's not going perfectly. That's yeah. that does that just ruins trust and it's not a great, you know, foundation. So I'm glad it looks like they nipped that in the bud pretty quickly. Thank goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's like, um, you know, couples who always threaten to like divorce each other, you know, like that, right. if that word's being thrown around, it's like, how do you feel? How do you feel secure in that? Um, right. Or does divorce just that word just lose its meaning? And you're like, oh, it doesn't nobody means it. And then when somebody actually means it, it's like really, really, you know, yeah. it, it, you you are caught by surprise because the word gets thrown around so much casually, and then all of a sudden somebody actually means it. But that's a rule that like you know, Cam and I early early on is like never threaten divorce. Like it only bring enough if you're actually really unhappy or considering it, like we're here to work shit out and figure things out. And that is like ultimate, ultimate last resort word, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, let's talk about SK and Raven real quick. Yes. Oh, (laughs) that made me sad. I was sad. I was so sad. I was shocked i was shocked I was, okay i truly was like jaw on the floor did not see that coming okay i am not trying to objectify a woman but goddamn raven is like one of the most <laughs> fucking gorgeous hot sexy ladies i have ever seen cam and i when she first got on the on the screen were like damn damn where did they find raven <laughs> So I, I know that it's more than looks, obviously we, this is love is blind, but we were not blind in that moment. We're like, holy shit. I mean, has, has he seen this woman? I, I, I mm, obviously very glad that they're still together. <laughs> no, I know she was stunningly, stunningly beautiful. Um, so I thought that they were kind of an unlikely pairing and I enjoyed this yeah. aspect of the season, which is what you had mentioned at the beginning that like this whole you cannot see the person until you propose you are really only connecting on an emotional level because right. people like Alex and Brennan people like SK and Raven where they were like yeah if I had seen you at a bar I don't even think I would have like given you the time of day yeah like you just were so not my type and I think SK and Raven were an unlikely pairing because she was very vocal about, vocal about how independent she was how like um kind of like unaffectionate she is and that just like not a stereotypical uh like wife homemaker right right right. and sk's culture is so different than that right and she had that conversation with sk's sister and mom where it was like yeah it's just really important that like you always have food ready for him and those sort of things and you can see like raven's face like what what are we talking about and um I just I I loved how they found whatever balance I I guess works for them but so they were that unique situation of he said no at the altar but at the reunion we found out that they are together now yeah like they're still dating which that's great it's like yeah you, you don't really have to get married in that moment you can just be in a relationship you know in a committed relationship so I I was I was thinking, oh my gosh, they're not going to, they're not going to be together at all. That's a bummer yeah. because I, in the, at, at first I'm like, I think they're maybe too different to work. And then you really yeah. saw their relationship grow. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that was a nice, like, I don't know, it's just a, a nice testament that like these, these differences in, um, backgrounds and experiences and even like certain values, you can come together and like find common ground and have a really like beautiful balanced relationship. Yeah. Um, and I also, I love the fact that they're figuring out what works for them. They didn't get married, but they're together. And then the same thing with, um, Colleen and Matt, the fact that they hadn't moved in together yet. And people were kind of like, Oh, what's going on there? Like, this is what's working for us right now. We have our own places and we're finding a common place that we're excited about. And that just made me, it made me think of when Cam and I moved in together. Um, we had only been dating five months and people were like really freaked out by that. Like, Oh, are you sure that's not enough? That's not much time. And X, Y, you know, everybody, people had a lot of opinions about it, you know, in our, in our, kind of circle. And, you know, now we've been together like over, you know, six years now, and it was one of the best moves ever 
because I, I don't know how long we could have gone without moving in together before it just was too much of a strain on our relationship. And then we were like, I don't know if we can kind of keep doing this, like the way that we've been doing. So I think it's stuff like that, where you just have to do what actually works for you as a couple and fuck everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody is living your day-to-day life in your relationship. Right. Yeah. You know, people's like, oh, you should really date, you know, at least a year before moving in. How about fuck off? How about I do what I want? (laughs) Right. Yes. And Uh, guess what? If it doesn't work, I'll just move out. What a concept. I'll just get my shit and go (laughs) the way that I got my shit and moved it in. (laughs) Yeah. So I just thought that that was great. Like they stood their ground, like, Hey, this is what's working for us. We're going to find a place together soon. And what, um, Raven and SK like, yeah, we didn't get married, but like, we're together. And Mm -hmm. he's like traveling back and forth to see each other. I'm like, awesome. You know, it's all, it's all just based on what works for you really. And no, no, no set of rules that we all have to follow. Totally. So let's get to our last two couples. So Nancy and Bartice who, so I've been mentioning Bartice about that. He, and, and so were you about that. He did not handle that reveal day well and kept calling. So Bartice and Raven had been dating in the pods, didn't end up together. But then when Bartice saw Raven, he had a lot of feelings about his physical attraction to her, especially compared to Nancy, who he had yeah. proposed to. And Nancy and Bartice had a conversation where it was like, well, how did that go for you with seeing the other people? And Nancy was like, it was great. It just kind of solidified that I've made the right decision. I didn't have any I wasn't second guessing anything. Right. And Bartice right. was like, oh, it was actually the opposite for me. <laughs> right. Which I know everybody around the world watching was like, oh my God, what uh, are you doing? Yeah. Stop saying words. And he just kind of went on and on about what a smoke show Raven was and that he and her are the type of people that attract attention when they walk into a bar and yeah. all this stuff. And it just was like, Man, I, and I know it's so hard. We don't know, everybody's relationship is so different, but I found that hard to watch and to picture like continuing to stay Yeah, as like putting myself in Nancy's shoes. I was like, God, that would be really hard Yeah, to like hear him talk that explicitly about his physical attraction for somebody in a way that it, it, I feel like he was making it clear that he was more physically attracted to yeah. Raven than to her. And that just, God, that is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. I think that would be really hard for me to, it would take me a while to get over. I would need mm-hmm. a lot of like evidence that that person was actually happy in our relationship and attracted to me and like felt good about mm-hmm. being in the relationship. I would, that would take me some time and like some recurring, like, evidence and trust you know yeah 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 Yeah. um that was a very tense wedding and nancy had said like all i asked of you was that you wouldn't blindside me right at the altar because she said yes and he said no and he had sent her that shot beforehand that was like let's do this yeah which of course is all of this messaging of like i'm going to say yes to you at the altar right right but he said that it wasn't until he was at the altar that he realized he didn't want to marry her. Yeah. Um, But man, that was so tense with her family. Like I had a hard time. Like my heart was racing watching. I I was felt very uncomfortable watching that post wedding stuff. Yeah. I know. I really, uh, yeah. She's, she's just so awesome too. Like she's got like this great career and she owns property and she's so like emotionally mature. Like the way that she carried herself throughout the entire show, which like, if you like being on a a show of any kind, they can edit you to make you look any way that they want to. And they, it it was very obvious. They didn't have fucking shit or no dirt on Nancy. Like, like just the way that, I mean, a lot of, a a lot of people carried themselves really well, but I was like, especially impressed by like how she communicated and stuff like that. And even in the face of something like that could be really hurtful, the way that she like respectfully communicated, you know, in that situation, which would be 
so hard for, I would, uh, for me is I don't think I would have been able to do that good of a job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I That's a yeah. great point. She really kept her cool. And when he tried to do the whole, like, I mean, but like, can we keep seeing each other? Whatever he was proposing after he had said no to her at the altar that he like wanted to keep dating or whatever. And she was like, no, no, but so. she's also said it and said like, she wasn't shitty at all. And she definitely could have been. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was, she was very impressive. Um, And then, okay. Last couple, which I feel like was pretty easily the most controversial, most discussed couple was Cole and Zainab. Yeah. So I would love to, I mean, this is so like, people are so divided on the internet about how they feel about each person in this relationship and what I think everybody needs to remember myself included is that we only saw tiny fractions yes of of their relationship so based on the tiny fractions we saw how did you feel about them I didn't see enough to know what was going on either way like that's how I felt I felt very like I don't know. Like, I don't know here. Um, and like you said, I mean, they film people for hours and hours every single day. We're seeing like less than 1% as a finished product and it's supposed to be entertaining, you know, it's for entertainment. So, um, I feel like I could see both sides of certain things, but I also do think that there were some very clear issues, you know, Um, like some of the smaller things that they were kind of, you know, bickering about, I could see like both sides and like, we would all need to see like all of the footage to, you know, take a peek at what was actually going on potentially. Um, And even then we still might not know. Um, But, you know, there was some hurtful things said for sure. um, Yes. You know, in, in the relationship that, that can be, yeah, that could be hard to like come back from. Yeah. I, there were a couple things from what was shown yeah. that Cole had said to her that I had a really hard time. Oh, like the bipolar stuff, right? Like she Sever- is ask, asking, hey, are you bipolar? Like that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah, Several obviously. Several things that yeah. I had a really hard time giving Cole any like uh, forgiveness or like trying, yeah. you know, you like try to stay open-minded to people and to seeing their process on the show. And it was like, man, you are saying some things that I feel like are defining your character in a not great way right now. Yeah. Um, the whole, one of the very first things that rubbed me the wrong way with him was, you know, she had made comments leading up to taking off her makeup that she I think was feeling a little insecure about him seeing her without makeup, which God, I relate to that so hard. I feel like a lot of women feel that way where we, especially like early on in dating, you're trying to look like your best self. And then when you become more intimate with somebody and um, you're letting them see you with like your night garden and no makeup and you know, all the things you want to feel loved and accepted and feel that the person you're with finds you just as beautiful if not more yeah and so she had I think made comments about it leading up to taking her makeup off and then she took her makeup off and his reaction was whoa you do look like a different person without makeup oh I don't remember that I yeah I remember you don't remember that, that? yeah no I do now there's oh, a, okay. there's a lot of little little things along the way in their relationship yeah I do remember that and it wasn't like necessarily you look worse or better. It was just you look different, right? Whoa, you do look like a different person. And ooh, I had a visceral reaction yeah. watching them say that. Yeah. And so I think there have been some people on the internet that have said like he was like saying that in jest because then like shortly after that, he was like, You look so beautiful. You right. look you look great. Right. But to me, it this is just my opinion. It came off kind of like negging where like you do get this jab in of yeah. like being like, Oh, like, yeah, I don't, don't know how I feel about that. But then maybe you realize that it sounded harsh and you try to kind of be like, but you do look beautiful. You look beautiful. Yeah. That's how I interpreted that. And again, this is just from what I right. watched on the show. I couldn't see any more footage than any other person, but yeah. I, that just hit this certain button in me because I relate to 
I, I just think a lot of women relate to that fear totally. of like, okay, first time this person's going to see me without makeup. I hope they still think I'm beautiful. Yeah. It was hard for me to like gauge with their dynamic because there was so much sarcasm in their relationship. I never knew what was like serious or sarcastic. Yeah. I also look at Cole. I'm like, is he like trying to be funny and it's not hitting? Is it, is it immaturity? Is it his personality? I also thought that he was funny in certain moments. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's so different to me than watching something like one of the married at first sight seasons we've had several of the experts on the podcast by the way go ahead and peep those episodes <laughs> but like watching something where oh this person is clearly being abusive to this person and stringing them along and lying to them and manipulating them like there are there are certain reality shows where it's so blatantly clear that this person is like has high levels of narcissism or whatever right. I just didn't feel clear with what their dynamic was you know so yeah. the ending of it like I was very shocked that, um, I was shocked that, you know, she, she uh, Zainab said what she said at the altar, yeah. um, based on just definitely there was, there was things that he said that were not cool. And I thought that like they were addressed privately or between them on the, you know, and other conversations. So I was actually very surprised by that kind of speech at the altar. I mean, do whatever you want. But that, that took me by surprise. I thought yeah. if it was going to be a no, it was just going to be like, no, it's not a good fit. Kind of see you later. Um, but so, yeah, I don't know. I've like not decided in any way based on like what I saw with their interactions. And I think it's also because Cam and I have such a sarcastic relationship where if people overheard some of the shit we said to each other, I think they'd right. be very confused. <laughs> Um, right. and so a lot of the things that we say, like, what's up, you piece of shit. You know, it's not like, I oh my actually, gosh, right. you know, we think each other's a piece of shit. It's, it's out of love, which I know sounds weird to some people. <laughs> um, but so I, I don't know. I have a hard time when somebody has like sarcasm kind of dynamic to like, know what's the deal. I agree. And they did have, like, you could tell in their interactions that there was a lot of sarcasm, a lot of. I think he would call it passive aggressive on her end, but I think it was yeah. like, yeah, it felt like sarcasm. I don't know. It was a strange, they did have a strange dynamic in terms of humor. And I think that they were <clears throat> both trying to navigate when somebody was being sarcastic or serious. Yeah. The other time with him that it, it to me, I sensed zero sarcasm. It was really just this like very immature, very hurtful thing was when he said to her, I, Colleen is a 10 and yeah. you're an eight, right? Was it that he called her an eight or a nine? But either way, he- I think she he, asked something about like, what's, yeah, what's my rate or grade or something? I don't know, something like that. Right, right. Yeah. Like he made Colleen the ideal, like that this was like as high as you could get in terms of right. physical beauty. And then he told- his fiance to her face to me you're an eight or nine right. i can't remember if it was eight or nine but it was less than right 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 this yeah. not only somebody that isn't her but the person that he had dated and then flirting with at the pool and that was another one of those situations where i was like i don't know that if i were zaina that i could have come back from that moment where it's like it's just so unnecessary and yeah. so hurtful to be like blatantly ranking the person you're with and ranking them lower than this other person yeah. that's on the show and so when Zainab got to the altar and she said you have single-handedly shattered my self-confidence yeah and he felt blindsided by that I guess I was confused at him feeling blindsided because it's like well you guys had I, on camera discussions about at least that particular conversation where she was like do you see how hurtful that is yeah that like I'm never going to look like Colleen and you're telling me that that's like in your mind the standard of beauty right 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 yes no it's tough again it's like similar situation with Bartice like okay inside thoughts keep it to yourself you know keep what I yourself. mean yes. and if your partner says you know what's my rate say you're a fucking perfect 10 baby yeah right whatever right. you gotta say um but Cam and I actually had a conversation about this too and we're like look 
the rating system, it's like, okay, if you're rating just on physical appearance, but like when you think about your partner, you're taking physical appearance into it, personality values, like a sense of humor to where, yeah. So we actually talked about the rating stuff too, because mm -hmm. I don't, I think it would, it's, it, it's would be hard to hear, but I also, to me, like understand, like if the argument is like, look, the perfect 10 might be like a Chris Hemsworth type to a lot of people. Oh, Does sure. your partner look like Chris Hemsworth? Probably not. Right. <laughs> but like, if we had to like, you know, do like mm -hmm. a, a 10, just on physical appearance, not, we right. don't know what their, their personality might suck. I don't know Chris right. personally, but who knows, right? Like we don't know anything else about that. Right. And then you are looking at your partner who maybe doesn't look like a movie star or supermodel that you see in a magazine. You know, if you had to have a rating system and you, you think about it logically, yes, but would it suck to hear that? Definitely. And that does suck to hear, but I also understand if you're taking, if you're taking a very analytical approach to like the, you know, most whatever beautiful people in the world that everybody has said, okay, right. this is it. Um, I don't know. But when I think about the fact that Cam's my perfect 10, it's because of him holistically, not one uh -huh. area that we're like rating on. And that's right. like how he feels about me, but we both think we're like attractive people. So I right. don't know. I think I'm a little, I, I totally understand that that's hard to hear, but I also kind of um and again it's you're saying it about somebody else who is in the room that that would be hard yeah you know mm -hmm. like hey this person that you're friends with or that you know is like a perfect 10 and you're an eight that fucking blows but if it's yes. like hey look i think heidi klum's a 10 and so does most of the world or whatever i'm <laughs> sorry like, right I, right I yeah. but the, the whole rating system is so fucked why can't we just get rid of that shit it's so bad that just should so never yeah, yeah yeah it's just a recipe for hurt for but zero yeah, reason i um, totally like comparing it to somebody that they both know like that's uh that's a different situation than what cam and i were talking about yeah and then just to wrap up with um with colin zainab and all the couples so the big discussion that came from the reunion was this whole tangerine this discussion oh, right yeah 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 the cuties the clementines whatever yeah so zainab had said you, that cole had basically like shamed her for eating two tangerines before they were going to go to dinner yeah. and that he had said like we're you know don't i can't remember i i'm gonna butcher the exact words so please don't hold me to this but the concept of like we're about to go eat a big dinner, so don't get too full now. Right. And people have gone, it's been such a polarizing thing on the internet of like how people feel about it. And um, I just, I think from Zainab's perspective, if she had felt very picked apart or very judged or devalued by Cole physically. Yeah. And then- and then I think like everything then goes into that perspective, right? Oh, it's Where you're like a like, pile on kind it's of It's a effect, pile on. Right, yeah. So I, it's hard to tell it because then they play the scene at the very end of the reunion. It's hard to tell. Sometimes Cole says things where you're just like, God, you just seem so like aloof. Like I can't tell if you're being shitty and manipulative intentionally or if you really are just like aloof. Yeah. And- that I, I don't know I, I i don't think anybody can know for sure if cole's intentions when he said that were in a shitty shaming controlling way or if they were just that aloof like okay like we'll just know that we're about to eat like a big dinner so like save room for that or whatever i think like some people have said that to a partner with zero ill intention right. of just like all right remember we're about to eat a big dinner but I think like if I were Zainab and I had had a partner who was doing that too, I probably also would have heard his comments and felt like he's, he's like monitoring what I'm eating. He's shaming me. Right. And like you're seeing it from a different lens at that point where yes. one isolated clip for an audience, we're not seeing the full picture. So yes. in that interaction, I'm like, that seems like an interaction cam and i would have about something i didn't feel like i don't right. know you know where where cam might be like hey we're we're gonna we're going to that member that we're going to the dinner tonight or whatever 
almost saying is like a reminder to me, like, oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> you know? Right. You know? But right. I, I don't know. Again, I have no idea. We what don't know. Dynamic yeah. is. So right. I right, understand right. where people can be split about a lot of the things that happen because you're seeing such a small percentage, but I do think it's good to talk about all this stuff. And I think it yeah. can be a good kind of, um, compass for like your own or like litmus test for your own relationship and, and bring things up to your partner. Like I know Cam and I have had a lot of really deep discussions because of watching love is blind together, Wow, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it just, it brings it up. It's, it's a, it's a fun way to bring it up. And you also get to know your partner in, in different ways, but yeah. like everybody's bringing their own shit into it based on how their parents interacted and what's the culture in their home. And like, some families are really fucking sarcastic. Like uh, Alexa's family talked about like, yeah, we just talk shit to each other. It's funny. It's fun. And then like Brennan's family, probably not like that at all. Like more, right. maybe, maybe sweeter, sincere or whatever. And all of it kind of means the same thing, but they're using different language and tones and stuff and all that kind of like going back to like love languages. Um, I think you can have that with, yeah, how you interact with your partner too. And you got to learn the other person's preferences with how you talk to them. I know Cam and I went through that phase too. Oh, definitely. Like, Hey, this might've been normal in, in your, in your household, but like, this is what was, this is what it meant in my household. How can we meet in the middle of what communication is going to work for both of us? Because people are usually doing things without like ill intentions, but you also never know because it's a fucking reality show and people who are attracted to being on TV sometimes don't have the greatest intentions, Andrew. (laughs) And so you have to think about that too. When you're watching this is like, you hope everybody's really there to find like a life partner, but some people might be there to, for attention and to get famous. And like, that's part of it too you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Kelsey, do you think love is blind? <laughs> yeah, I think it, to- I mean, I think it can be. I like, I yeah. really think you look at the couples that come from the show and it's like, yeah, I, I really think it can be blind. Yeah. Do you think love is blind? Yeah, I think it can be, you know, I mean, it looks like it was for some people, but not for others. So I guess it's like, right. yes and no, depending on what, what's most important to you in your relationship or how you feel about your partner. Like I know for me, I, for me, I, when I'm attracted to somebody, it's, it's the whole person. I have been in situations where I'm dating or I'm with like a, an objectively very attractive person, but I don't feel any kind of connection or chemistry or personality doesn't click. And I've dated uh, other people that maybe some people might find like less conventionally attractive who I've been like totally fucking into and like really, yeah. really sexually attracted to. So yeah. I, I am a, always been kind of a personality person and yeah. um, I, I find that out pretty quickly. I'm either attracted to somebody's personality and that draws me in Or maybe I'm attracted to somebody's looks and then I get to know their personality and I'm like, no, that's not a fit, you know? Right. I will say this show, I do think tends to cast fairly conventionally attractive people. Yeah. And so when, when people are posed the question is love blind, at least on this show, it's like, I don't think there have been a lot of situations where people have like the doors slide open and they see who the person is with or see I'm sorry see who the person is that they have proposed to right like nobody's been in a situation where they're like oh I mean I feel zero physical attraction like that's that hasn't really happened I think maybe because it's television the casting it's like I personally think that like the people they put on the show are like reasonably physically attractive people. I'm sure from a producer standpoint, when you're trying to convince somebody to potentially like be engaged to somebody without looking at them, you probably be like, don't worry, we've looked, they're all pretty cute. You're not, you know, you know, like, which is, yeah. So is Love Really Blind? Who knows? Like, cause like you said, they've all been kind of, kind of conventional standards of, of beauty in certain ways. Yeah, it's a little curated. Because yeah. it is a TV show. I right. like you could do this experiment 
um, not on a TV show. And I don't know if it would be the same results in terms of answering the question, like, is love truly blind? Right. Um, because I do think, of course, like physical attraction plays a role into, um, into overall attraction. Right. Right. But I think, I wish the question love is blind was more like, are looks the most important thing? Because I think we could all agree that Right. Not, no. Can't speak for yeah. everybody, but I think right. a lot of people would agree that no looks are not the most important thing. And I think that's what the show strives to um, prove, I suppose. Yes. I, yeah. Looks are for me. I mean, I think my husband's hot, but no, looks mm-hmm. are not the most important thing to me yeah. in a relationship. And I, you know, I, I thought they used to be really high up there when I was younger. And it slowly yeah. like was like you know it's it would be it's a it's a plus <laughs> it's nice but like I'm gonna be attracted to like who they are as a person and their personality and yeah that's gonna be the thing that like holds that's the glue yeah when the older you get I think the more you realize that it's kind of an inverse ratio with physical um, appearance and your emotional mental maturity. And wisdom yeah. is like over time, you know, by the time we're old, you hope that you live to be an old age. You certainly don't look the same way you looked when you were 25. Yeah. You or your partner, but you hope that as a person, you've actually become like the most knowledgeable, wise, uh, compassionate version of yourself. So it's like, I mean, in the end, you really are, I think, trying to... um trying to take that into consideration more than physical attraction. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Holy moly. This has been a long episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just do the iTunes review and, and wrap it up. I think. Yes. This so, iTunes review. Or do you yeah, want to go, go for it? Del. Okay. This iTunes review is from Susie Snowflake 16 and it says love with a heart emoji. Uh, what is this emoji? Okay. Emoji. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Some fist pumps, clappings, some prayer. What is this? I don't, you're so uncool. I am not. Yeah. This is very fun to have. (laughs) This is fun for me to listen to you try to explain what (laughs) emojis are. Boy, we should do this as a regular segment on the show where I just show you five emojis and I'm like, what are these? (laughs) You tell me. (laughs) <laughs> lots of fun emojis saying like woohoo yeah it yeah. is a very sweet review thank you thank for you, taking Susie. the time to do it and so nice. uh goodness hope you guys enjoyed this i know it's one of those episodes where like if you are not a love is blind person You're it's like, probably not an, an episode for you <laughs> but if you are i hope you enjoyed um like listening and talking with us well yes. i know that you listeners didn't personally talk with us but i don't know maybe you'll talk about this episode with people I don't know what I'm saying. My brain is done at this point. It's been a long episode. Love is blind has killed our brain. It's killed our brain. Um, <laughs> please go to KelseyCook.com and get those tour dates, guys. Yeah, you can go to DelaneyFisher.com for the Minimalist Business Podcast. Yay. All right. We love you. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Self Helpless Podcast. You can find our Patreon community, merch, and our individual work at selfhelplesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you shared this episode with a friend or feel free to post it on Instagram and tag at selfhelplesspodcast so we can repost you and say thank you. Yeah.